that, that package. I can do the gloves first. Yeah. Okay, so I open, I put on my sterile gloves, and then I'm going to grab uh, this. So we don't have to no. wash hands before? Could you open yeah. both of them? And then put the sterile gloves on? And then that well, they're both open sterile, to get right? The, the, gloves to work on the, the stuff the inside this is sterile. So so open open the stuff first. inside this is sterile. So, so would you open them both and then wash your hands? Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I'm probably going to wash my hands first. First. So my hands are clean. Right. And maybe I'll open this up. Okay. When I open this up, it says cuff end on there. So I can open these up. And maybe even open them there. Okay. Everything in there is still sterile. So now I've got my sterile dressing thing. Everything inside here. Is sterile. This makes me nervous when they're videotaping me because later they're going to come back and go, You broke your sterile field. <laughs> um, so I can open this up. Don't touch anything. And I don't want to touch anything inside there because everything in there is still sterile. So the thing on top is a trash bag. So if I'm going to be doing things where I'm going to be removing dressings, or the reality is in most clinics, there's a big 50 gallon drum sitting in the middle and they're just toss some stuff in there. But this doesn't need to stay sterile, right? My trash bag. So I can I can open this up and set it over here on the side so that I've got some place to set all of my dirty dressings and stuff that I remove. If you look up my thing when I open this up, it actually says sterile field pick up here. So the bottom side of my sterile field is not going to be sterile. So I can I can pick that up and I can shake this out. And as long as I'm holding on to the blue. Couldn't you still do all that with your gloves on, though, just in case? Um, I could. That's a lot. Of, I mean, to me, I'm just like, that's a lot of risk. <laughs> well, for you, but for yeah. all of it. Just show us the way down to pass the test. <laughs> See, I didn't get that all the way open, so I'm going to leave that oh, for now. Wow. Um, that's your sterile blanket it's talking about yep. then, or towel? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I've got everything in here. Now, I don't want to touch anything in there still, um, so I'm going to dump it out on here. Hi, Teresa. Hi. How are you? Good. You've got that side, right? I'll take that side. That's what they told me you wanted, because that's got the tables in it. Okay. And the projector and everything. All right, very good. Thank you. So, everything inside there is still sterile. Mm -hmm. So I can dump it out here on my sterile field, and I still haven't contaminated anything. Now I might want to hold on to this. The bottom of this thing is still sterile. This, the rest of the paper and stuff isn't. So I can leave it there. Now I've, now I've got this all set up. All right. If I need sterile water or something, I might use this thing for sterile water for packing a wound or something. Uh, this is a dressing change kit, and not a debridement kit, but. You know, different kits are going to have different things in them. We talked about sharp debridement uh, and what the NPTAs or the, the, the national APTA is, um, does not recommend PTAs do sterile debridement. I mean, do sharp debridement. <coughs> uh, but if you get a sharp debridement kit, it's going to come with, uh, it's going to come with a scalpel and a pair of tweezers. So if I can magically sterilize these, <laughs> those are sterile now. <laughs> All right, so now my gloves. i got to get my gloves on. I want to open them up. What I don't want to do is, Lita already told us how much of this I can pretend is sterile, right? And this one I actually just opened, so this really is all sterile, mm -hmm. except for those two things that I just right. threw on there. So there's an inch around the edge that's not sterile, but I, so I don't want to touch this. What I see people do is they'll, they'll flip this over like this. Mm -hmm. Now they've probably violated their sterile field. Yeah. They'll get it all set up and then they'll they'll set this here mm -hmm. to do that. And <coughs> they violated their sterile field. So I need to get a place where I can get this together and I can open this up and get at my sterile gloves without touching anything to my sterile field. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. My hands are clean. My gloves are still sterile because I haven't touched them. What I'm going to try to do is it doesn't matter which one I do first, but everybody stand up and make sure they can see this. But they came in the package with the cuffs flipped up, right? Oh, cool. So that's the inside of that glove and that's the inside of that glove. 
All right, so I'm going to grab inside of my glove, and I can stick my, my hand in here, and I still haven't touched the outside of my glove. Okay, so this hand is still sterile. Now I get a hold of this glove, and I want my fingers on the outside of this one. Oh, see, now it's ruined my sterile field. So now I've got my hand inside the cuff of that one, so I'm touching the outside of this one that's going on. And I'm going to tr try not to touch this hand, the inside of it. Yeah. Okay, so now my hands are still sterile. Now I can't touch anything that's not sterile. So what do I do if I get here and it's like, oh shoot, I needed something out of that. What do I do? Ask for assistance. Okay, so I've got two options. I can say, Renee, come here. <laughs> Open up that jar for me. Open up that jar for me. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, now I got my, go ahead and just set it down. Now I got my sterile tweezers and I can maybe go in there and now I got some packing stuff to do that. Okay, so uh, that's an option. If I have, oftentimes I'll need like a swab or something. I've, I've a million times grabbed those swabs for me. Leave it. It's sterile. It's dirty on the outside anyway. So you're going to peel them open. What are you doing holding all your books? <laughs> and then I can reach in here, and those are sterile, and I can pull them out, and I'm still sterile. All right. Now, as soon as I touch something with my hands, um, I can flip that open if I don't touch the outside of it. Get that all set. Is it one inch on this or so one like inch this, on here? This, okay, so one inch on that. Assume that this outside inch is not sterile. Okay. All the way around. Okay, all the way around. All right, so now I've got this on. If I need to document, i got a couple of choices. I can try to get someone to dictate for me. Some people actually use, some places actually use dictation machines for this. Um, other people are going to sacrifice a hand. All right. Most people are going to sacrifice their handwriting hand, which means you have to be able to stay sterile with your non-dominant hand, which is a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Well, I'm going to write with my um, You know, I've had people try to do that. Other okay, people will try to remember. So. Well, when you're wrapping, does it still have to be sterile? Yeah. So you yeah. have to wrap with one hand? Yeah. I mean, once you've covered up your once you're covered your, up, it's, it's on. Yeah, once your dressing's on. Do that with one hand. No, I'm going to. Once you put some down. Oh, once and the wound is covered, it's, up, you don't care about this. Right. Well, yeah. okay. well, and what did I say at the beginning was that most of the time clean. they're clean, clean and not sterile. So, what's most likely to happen that I'm most likely to do sterile is I get all this stuff out and then I have my forceps or I have a piece of gauze or my sharps if I'm doing sharps to breed men and I'm going to go in here and breed this sterile and then come out. Am I going to touch him? Sometimes I'm going to accidentally touch him. I would prefer to keep one hand all the way clean, but I'm not introducing anything into him. As long as I don't drag over from the outside down into his wound, I'm not going to introduce anything new to this wound even if I touch in there. Because sometimes you have to get in there and touch and pick at stuff. And, you still want to put that hand then in the back? No, I don't want to. I, I have to know sterile. that this one's, I sacrificed this one because I'm left-handed. So now I'm going to take my notes with this hand. And then anything else that I'm going to do that needs to be uh, sterile, what? I'm going to want to do with this hand. But now that you, you guys can go in the booth say you just touched him with your tweezers. Hair. When you put your tweezers Hey, in. who's not in here? When you, put, when you put your tweezers. I'm in here. <laughs> if you're quiet, you can still use the booths if you want. If you're not real noisy. Simply, you're always kind of noisy. <laughs> um, if you set it back down on your sterile pad, then don't you want to keep those tweezers away from anything? I, mean, I don't do want to. Oh, yeah, these the guys, pad? now that that's now not that sterile, that's what I'm going to actually do with these. See, I told you, you're going to videotape this, and then I'm going to do something wrong. Because I'm talking to you guys. So now I, I went in here and I touched this and then I might set them there. Okay. And now I can. And then if you want to reuse them, but now they're at least. Okay. But they're not, and they're not going to contaminate. Yeah, you just reaching across the stairs. I would just reach it. Yeah. 
So you know, reaching across a sterile field more often is going to be here. I'm doing this, and now oh, okay. I've flopped onto so it. Not like or if, the if I'm wearing like... scrubs with really short sleeves. sleeves, and I start shaking my armpit hairs over <laughs> the top of it, so we don't I'm not too sleeves. worried about. Hey, I have to pick this up, or mm -hmm. I don't want to have a big clump of goo on here and, and carry it across my okay. field and drop yeah. it in there. So I would want this. Would you to be close to that? I would want this over here. I have three, I've got at least three kids that you can practice with. I'll look for some more. I think I've got some more. So we don't have to put it in the order of use like the book is saying. You know, it's usually just sitting there. Practice at home with paper towels, Amy. <laughs> you know, if you have a, if you have a shoe box and just throw practice some things in it, get you a dishcloth and Pretend fold it up. Pretend sterile. Just hmm? purchase these kids. Can you? Yeah. I have yeah. no idea. Probably. What'd you say? I said you could purchase them somewhere. I, well, I, I'm like, you could call like CVS and ask them. When you practice, it doesn't have to be sterile. You could practice. Yeah. Yeah. What, what we're going to do with this is now that we're done, you know, when we get done, I'm just going to throw everything back in here. So be careful with all this stuff. And I'm going to stick everything back in here and then fold this back up the way I found it and lay my red bag on top and flip it shut. Mm -hmm. And then now I've got several of these that are already open that I can 